Uh, yeah, so Andres from Canada, Toronto, Canada, creative director at Global. Yeah, he asked, can you do this inside of Webflow? And he submitted this idea. And at first, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. Let me try it. And then now that I'm thinking about it, honestly, an hour before the stream, as I was going through this, I was like, maybe this wasn't a good idea. I don't know if I'll be able to get through this. Because it seems more complicated than I think, it, uh, than I thought it's going to be. So, yeah. How to make this work. Uh, find this code. <laughs> Beautiful code right here. Actually, there's a plugin that I have. Code mode. So, there's this beautiful code right here that Pablo gave to us. And you're pulling in 3JS. It's some JavaScript library that can do crazy things. And then WebGL. And then you're also pulling in tween max. I guess these three things is what makes that these animations happen. But the more important thing to remember is this right here. So when you name your element like the class name you got to remember to put it here so this one it's just my dash div you can name it whatever you want if you have any spaces in your class names replace those with dashes all right and i guess the intensity one intensity two i guess those are numbers that you can fiddle with to make it more intense i guess i haven't this is my first time using this code so i'm just trying to explain um, math, I actually got a D in it, so I'm not going to try to explain pi to you. So, um, I'm not really that good of a student. Uh, but here, this is important. Pulling in the image. Um, so you need to get the URL from your, I guess you can't pull it from your assets manager because that's what Mirko is saying. But I guess like pulling an image from a outside server. Oh, that sucks. But yeah, image one, image two, basically what's the first one? And then when you hover, what's the second image going to be? And then a displacement image. And so that displacement image is just images that look like different weird patterns like this. All right. Oh, wait, this one says uploads. So I think this one's gonna work. Here, let's change it. <laughs> Code mode. So why is there a... All right, let me see here. Publish. And, oh wait. And so after you put in the code, you need to add your element where that funkiness is going to have that awesome uh, animation is going to happen. So I can just add an, an element. We'll just say section and I'm going to give it a class name of my dash div. And for my dash div, I gave that a height of hundred VH and a position relative just in case. And that's it. So on Webflow, since it's a code thing that's going to happen, you won't see it happen in preview. You won't see it happen in Webflow. You need to publish it. After you publish, does it work? Yeah, it works. The hover works, but I guess the displacement doesn't because of that cores issue. Yeah. Access the image at, oh, it's telling me to change the your. Okay, it's telling me to change the URL to this. All right. Okay, let's try it again. Save, publish. And so if that works, then, oh, it does. So I just changed the displacement. Now it's triangles. 
Oh man. Now it makes me wonder this majestic pools. This one website that my wife and I did for this client. What if we can make it water? Make stuff water. <laughs> so at the beginning of the stream, I said, I don't know why people would need this. You know, is, is it overkill? And then here's me going, ooh, what if I had water effects for, for this hover? <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going to try it, though. I'm going to do it. Maybe I should do it. No, I'm not going to do it behind my client's back. No. I can send them. I'll probably send them a video and be like, hey, you think it would be cool if we did this? I'll just do it for free. I mean, like. Because <laughs> they they make custom pools for very, very rich people. I mean, look at that. When I was going through these photos with my wife as she was building the site, I was like, are you kidding me? Like, look at that. You got to like the things that you see at like Legoland. <laughs> and then infinity pools like what? OK, I'm getting off topic, but yeah. So this would be a cool uh, example to use that displacement stuff. Um, on client site. So don't listen to past Nelson. Listen to current Nelson and use this because it's easy and it might give you the extra wow factor that your clients will love you for. So yeah, that was short. Thank you, Pablo. Pablo for saving the day. And also that whole cores thing. Um, I wonder, is this... I wonder if the, the file name... Let me see here. The file name is the same. It's just that... Hold on. Let's... Let's see here. If I... So this is the random string that Webflow gives each um, each uploaded asset, and then underscore, and then the file name. And this is actually the uh, the Webflow uh, Webflow site ID. This is a public ID that you can see on any website. So if you like view source inspect. It's actually, there we go, data WF site. It's this right here. So, yep. So, and the URL. So if you just change the URL to assets.webflow-website-files.com, then it'll work. So that's a way to get around that whole cores security thing. I don't know what that's about. But there you go. So just change it to this URL instead of this, and you'll be fine. So yeah, that's how you do the displacement. I thought this was going to be one of those streams where I fail. But thank you again to Pablo for helping me and showing us that. Um, I'll put the code in the YouTube description. But yeah, that's it for the tutorial. Put the code, put your URLs, and there you go. That's pretty cool.